to the sweetness we like. Uh, and you can actually see the colours all kind of evened out as well. Now, uh, so I am going to siphon this here into the keg. So basically, this is where what I do departs from what everyone else does. What most people do at this stage is siphon into glass bottles, seal them up, and put some sugar in, and then it'll re ferment to make it bubbly. But the problem with that is two things. One is you grow a little scoby in the bottle, which is pretty disgusting to drink. And the other is it's really uncontrolled, so it can either be not enough fizz or too much fizz and just explodes everywhere. Um, and also fiddling around putting sugar and stuff like that and trying to seal those bottles up. So the first step is to just start to siphon off into the ball lock keg here. So uh, and Nico, you can come over here and just take a close shot. So come in and I want to so basically you just go to a brewing shop and get these kegs, they've got ball locks and they've got a tube into the inside. You can see that. You can see the tube down there? Nice. And um, they've got a seal lid on them. So we're going to start this off here. Now, so this is a, I think I've got an auto siphon, but a tube just works the same. But these are really great actually. So, I'll lift that up. And actually I found this little kombucha inside there and I might try and grow it and uh, send it up there. So here we go, push that down. Oops. And off it goes. Right, so she's filling up. Okay, you can pause now Nico. Okay, so the next bit of this is uh, flavouring. And it is purely flavouring. Last time I used this grape juice that we make from our grapevine, which is really yummy, so I'm going to do that again. And also this lemon verbena. Uh, I'll make a tea out of it, and this is what I've used before, and lemon verbena is just amazing stuff. You can't kill those bushes, you cut them back and they grow again. And they uh, grow so fast, but they have a lovely lemon kind of... Uh, uh, what's that plant? Not mustard. Ginger. Lemon and ginger kind of flavour. So it's really nice. So I'm just going to make that in a teapot to set. So I'll pour this out. So I used about a, a litre the first time and a half a litre the next time. But <clears throat> so I'm going to go for a, a litre again, I think. Uh, of course, this is 500 ml, but anyway, this is two. This make lemon verbena in here, pop it in, fill it with hot water, and leave it for a few minutes, and we'll just pour that in as well. Um, I put the lime zest in last time, but that actually turned out to be kind of problematic because it got stuck in the little zesty bits got stuck trying to siphon it out into the bottles. I might do that again, but you could taste the zest, it's pretty nice actually. So I'll leave that for 15 minutes. Right, pause. Okay, so it's almost siphoned all out. Now, when you make kombucha, you need to leave some of the previous batch behind to kind of prime the next one. So it's always a bit of a thing about how far you can go emptying this out because obviously you want to drink it but you need to need you need to leave enough behind so uh, I kind of use it all of about 20 percent and that's probably it so I'll just get that stop it like this and just let the again now. Okay, so flavouring is super easy, you just pour the stuff in. Okay, and we get some more of this stuff. Quite, but 
looks fine. There's the simmer in there. That goes in the and that goes in as well. So I've got about a litre of that concentrated grape juice in there. I'm going to put plunge this, plunge this lemon verbena. So plunge that. Yep. Yep, and that goes in as well. Right. Now, a little of the keg goes on. Let me just go on like this and go rub a seal. It's super easy with kombucha. You don't have to be really pernickety about infection like you do with beer because it's naturally got acid in it, it kills everything. Right. Okay, pause this. Right, so we're at the next step here, where we have to put CO2 in. Now, I've got a 5 kg CO2 bottle I got on Trade Me for about 250 bucks. These are a great investment. Um, obviously, I need it for making beer. There's a beer regulator that's about 70 bucks. Um, the thing about these is you can get a little attachment to refill your soda stream bottles. So, you, uh, filling up a 5 kg one of those is about $40. So basically they pay for themselves pretty quickly in just refilling soda stream bottles with nothing else. Anyway, that's on the side. So we turn that on. Yep, up we go. And we plug it into here. Then and out, that'll do. It doesn't matter. The gas one. That one. And we pump it up with CO2. And I go to about 20 PSI on this. Give it plenty of bubbles. So basically, the more pressure you put in, the more bubbles you get. And then the last step, I'll just turn it off, is you put it into a cold place. Put it into a cold fridge too, because obviously. Follow me. CO2 absorbs. Uh, how are we going to fit that in there? I don't know. Oh, maybe we can go sideways. Long ways. Ooh. No, pick. Uh, hey, Nico, you what? need to be thinking about what you're filming. Mm. Radio, so we have a bit of a rearrange mm. yep. in the fridge now. Yeah. Um, obviously, you have to come back every now and then because the yeah. CO2 absorbs and you have to keep putting it in for a couple yeah. of days. But after about two days, it's got enough fizz so you can kind of taste it yeah. and bottle it like we showed you. Now, Nico's informed me I haven't told you something. Yeah. So, um... What is it, Nico, we need to tell them? Oh, yes. He tells me that we haven't told you how to make the grape juice, right? Yeah. So um, don't worry about the grape juice. Just yeah. put in any, any flavouring you like, right? Yeah. Cool. That's finished. Good luck.